This is Dan Bolin, and I'm the host of the podcast, The Courage to Be Courageous, where people come from all over the world to their, share their stories, how they use courage to overcome their fear. And I want to thank all of you for listening to my podcast. I just want to uh, inform everybody that I did a live interview on the Daily Blast live and it is actually on YouTube now. I did it on April 18th. So if you go to YouTube and put the Daily Blast Live, Dan Bolin, it will, be, it will pop up and you can see the video. And I think it will have a powerful effect on the community as well. Not only just the LGBTQ community, but the heterosexual ally community as well. You'll see uh, fascinating comments made by the host, Sam Schrader. And I think you'll find it very encouraging uh, for all of us to be able to understand the importance of equality for all of humanity today. Of course, the courage to be courageous, as you know, is something that we've always featured and how people have been able to use courage. And we're going to talk about an event today, and I think it's a, it's a very, I, I think it's not only powerful, I think it's understanding the impact they've had on the LGBT rights today. Many of you don't even necessarily know about it, especially the younger people. It happened 55 years ago. I was just in my early 20s, so I didn't know anything about it. Young people today who are part of the LGBT community, maybe have heard of the event, but it was a pivotal event that really supported many of our rights that we have today. For example, same-sex marriage, which was totally illegal back at the time in the 60s and 70s. The freedom that we have to join the uh, Air Force or to join the Army or join the Reserves and be gay is a freedom that we have today. Whereas before, in the 50s and 60s you, 60s, you were fired if you were found out to be a homosexual and given a dishonorable discharge. Also, the rights we have with employers today where we can be LGBTQ and they cannot fire us because of that. So we're going to talk about this event. It actually happened in 1969. It was called the Stonewall Rebellion or the Stonewall Riot. And we're going to talk a little bit about what happened and why it was such an impetus in getting us into the freedoms that I just mentioned that we have today. Now, an important part of the LGBT History Month is remembering the Stonewall Riots. These were a series of demonstrations by members of the LGBT community in New York in 1969. On June 28th, police raided the Stonewall Inn, which was a place of refuge for gay and lesbians and transgender. Not many places and welcome members of the LGBT community at this time, and they were faced widespread discrimination. Now, police would often raid these gay and lesbian establishments, but people were angry about the force used by the police People began to protest against this unfair treatment. This led to organized demonstrations and the founding of a gay right, activist people, and groups. On the one-year anniversary of the Stonehall Riots, the first gay parade event took place in the USA. In fact, it was one year after the Stonewall Riots started, in June 28th, now, this is 1970, one year later, that is where the pride took place. So our tri that's why June today is called the Pride Month, because it's an anniversary of the Stonewall Rebellion. And what's interesting, on this first day where the Pride events were established, it was held in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. And now, Pride events are all held all around the world to remember the Stonewall Riots. 
and says and celebrate the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. Named after the riot, Stonewall is a British charity established in 1989 to empower LGBT people and promote inclusivity. Remembering the Stonewall riots and being able to stand up for our rights is an important moment of the LGBTQ History Month. Now let's talk a little bit more about what happened at these Stonewall riots. There was a series of protests as police would come in to the inn. Now they would come in there quite often to be able to... Um, it got so common, people would say, oh, the lights went on. It's, it's, I guess we're being raided. But this time, they decided we are not going to be discriminated against. And so they refused to be arrested. Many of them, uh, and the police used their clubs to, to club some of them. They would want to, and I guess they would, one of the eyewitnesses said that he looked at, they looked at the, uh, the older amount and tried to, and the police tried to get money from him. As I mentioned, they were owned by the mafia. We don't all know what went on between that, where they were getting money from the mafia or whatever. But the priest, the police this night used brutal force against the LGBT community, and they fought back. Now, this didn't just go on for one night. It was about 2 o'clock in the morning when it started. And it went all night, even to the point that there were about 200 patrons at the inn, and the police were inside with them, and the uh, people on the outside, over 200 of them started coming and protesting, not only the LGBT community, but heterosexual allies as well. And finally, when the police came out and told them in a homophobic slur to leave, they didn't leave. This event went on for almost five days. Now, um, the Stonewall Inn is in the Greenwich County, in the lower part of Manhattan. And here's what's interesting here. When the police became violent, they began to resist even more. These riots are widely considered to be the watershed event that transformed the gay liberation movement and the 20th century fight for LGBTQ rights in the United States. I'm going to repeat that because I think this is a powerful point. The riots are widely considered the watershed event that transformed the gay liberation movement and the 20th century fight. For LGBTQ rights in the United States. So it helps us to understand how important this event were. These are people that had a voice and they had courage and they stood up for the rights of the LGBT community. And that motivated others throughout the whole United States and eventually throughout the world to fight for LGBT rights, become an activist, have a voice, do something about it. What's interesting, tensions between the New York police and gay residents in Greenwich Village erupted into more press, more protests evening after evening when the uh, village residents organize into activist groups. Now they start getting groups of protesting against the by violation, the discrimination against the LGBT community. There were two famous transgendered people, Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. They were transgendered women. And they are known for a struggle and fight they had with the police. In fact, Marsha P. Johnson uh, called up on a light pole, I believe, and dropped a heavy a heavy, um, I'd say, a brick into a police window. They were fighting. They would put them in the car, the cop car, and they would go out the other side. They weren't going to be arrested because they had done nothing wrong. 
They ended up even forming what they call a kick line. So when police officers would come at them with their clubs, they formed a kick line to kick back. That's how vigilant they were for fighting for the rights of the LGBT community. And these new activist organizations continued to continued to escalate. In fact, within months, three newspapers were established to promote rights for gay men, lesbians, and bisexual people. So it's really helped us to understand the importance of this event. It started the Pride event, which is held in June every year. It's held throughout the world now. Not only, as I mentioned, have these this um, event been so critical in forming activist group for LGBTQ rights, but it's also fought for the rights of our heterosexual allies. The Equality Act of 2010, which was one of the things that um, the rebellion at Stone Ride caused, is discrimination laws that not be discriminated against because of your sex, your gender, your color, or your religion. Those are things that came out of Stonewall Jackson today. So I think it's really important that we reflect on this and, and really understand how powerful and how important this is in events today and the events of our lives today because from this became activist groups that began to fight for equal rights for the LGBT community. That's where we had same-sex marriage here in the United States. As a result of that being the foundation, the rebellion at Stonewall being the foundation for that. As I mentioned, we talked about it earlier. We can go to the military as an LGBTQ person and not be fired. We can't be let go at our jobs. I mean, all of the events were started by the Stonewall Rebellion in 1969. Also, 30 countries have the Marriage Equality Act now. A hundred anti-discrimination laws now are in countries throughout the world. And yet, still 70 countries still punish homosexuals. But you can see by these facts that the riot at Stonewall had a major impact, not only on our country, but also on the world. And I think one of, us, one of the things we need to do is, is reflect on this. Well, what does this mean for us today? I think there's several things it means for us. Number one, an appreciation that the rights we have today came from the rights that people fought for many years before us of people we didn't know. And many of you may not even know of this event. Number two, I think it also helps us to appreciate the importance of having a voice, having a voice for our community. Without a voice, we are silent. They weren't silent anymore. We have to have a voice. And what does that mean for us today? Well, many of our listeners are part of the LGBT community, but many of them are heterosexual allies. We all can have a voice. Much of the legislation that we have today has been between our heterosexual allies supporting us and also the LGBT community as well. We need our heterosexual allies. We need all of us to have a voice. And I think it's interesting when we lose our voice or don't have a voice, our rights get taken away. LGBTQ community has had to fight for their rights through years. So it's really the importance, I think, of having a voice. If you have an interest in learning more about this event, if you go to uh, the Stonewall Riots 1969, there's a tremendous amount of articles written about it. Some on YouTube show some of the experiences that people had there as well. It's a pretty powerful, I believe also there is a documentary on Marsha P. Johnson and her fighting for trans, uh, 
transgendered rights as well. So this was really powerful for me. Uh, I really feel like I really um, been encouraged. Uh, it's encouraged me to have even a louder voice, to be able to help individuals that are struggling with who they are, and to continue to write to fight for the rights of all of us of you of humanity. Thank you all for listening to my podcast today. It's been such a pleasure. And thank you all for so many of your comments about my uh, podcast with the Daily Blast Live, Dan Bolin, on YouTube. It's very encouraging to see so many of you found that was very powerful and had made somewhat of a difference in your life. Thank you all and have a great day.